how do we walk out of life depending on God for everything? And, and it falls right back down to the basics. Yeah. I want us to jump in because uh, the mothers are, are what birthed us. And we were birthed as a child. And we have to come to God like a child with complete humbleness, humility, belief, and faith. See, it says within the scripture, Psalms 127, verse 3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Each and every individual here is a child. You're a child of the almighty God. We're all children, and you are a reward. And we cannot lose focus that we are a reward, that you're chosen, you have a purpose, you have a passion, you're not an accident, you're not a mistake, you are here because God wanted you here. Because God has a purpose and a plan for you. God has a destiny for you. God has something for you that he wants. He, God has something that, you know what, I, you are my child. You are a reward. And, and you know, I want you to be able to fulfill this. I want you to, I'm going to walk with you. I, you know, it all starts by a child. We all enter the world by a child. We all enter as a reward. It says in Psalms 51, 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. I love this scripture because it pretty well identifies how we approach God. Let me just tell you, to be broken, spirit is to be weakened or destroyed in spirit. That, that's what it says. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. I come to God broken. I come to God knowing that, you know what, I, I cannot fix this. I cannot save myself. There's nothing that I can do without you. I come completely broken because the one that created me can definitely put me back together. Oh, you know what? And when you put me back together, the only individuals that's going to see the scars might be the world. That's okay. It might be some friends. That's okay. But you don't see the scars because I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. We have to come to God as a child. See, it's also a, a contrite means feeling or expressing pain or sorrow for sins or offenses. And, and I, I use this scripture because, you know, we have to come and, and realize, you know what, Lord, I, I failed. I, I made a mistake. I, I'm in the midst of, of sin or, you know, I, I treated someone wrong or I did this wrong. And, and God loves an open confession. He loves honesty that we come to him and completely honest. You know what, Lord, I blew it. See, I, I love the fact that, you know, I, I think, you know what, Lord, why did you give me a, a, a child later in my years? And I believe it's because, you know, he, he's made me wiser to really look at Joshua. I, I can sit there and I watch Joshua and, and I could just watch him for hours because I see how we should be to God. Because I can correct him. And he could be crying and do, he, he, he doesn't care for the situation that happened. He doesn't like that he was just, you know, scolded. He, he knew there was discipline. But there's never a time he doesn't turn to me and say, Daddy, I love you. Complete dependency, no matter what. See, we have to be like that to God. He corrects us. We can't run the other way. We have daddy, father in heaven. Fa what, what? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And it makes him, whenever he does something wrong, he comes with repentance. There's tears. Oh, daddy, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sometimes 99% of the times it's innocent. There's only like 1% of the time that's like, that looks like a fake tear. Are you wanting to play on the PlayStation? Yeah. <laughs> At least he's honest. But I love how, how he... he he believes and trusts mommy and daddy. I love the fact that, that kids are so trustworthy. They're innocent. That's why they have to be protected. But this is how we should be coming to God Almighty with this complete innocence and trusting of God that, you know, there's no reason for worry. There's no reason to, to, to even have a doubt. You know, I, I, you know, I just come to you. He, he doesn't worry. Have you ever looked at your children or, or, or you know, kind of remembered back at times and, and they're walking around in a house? I look at Joshua and he, he doesn't think about where his food's coming from. He doesn't think about the mortgage on the house. He doesn't think about the electric bill. He, he just knows that, you know what, I, I, I'm taken care of because there's a trust. There's a hope. There's a faith in something. And we teach him that it's God Almighty. 
It, it's God Almighty. See, see, I have to teach him to have that dependency. See, we have to come to God as a child because too many times as we grow older that we're, we're not coming to God as a child. We're coming, that we're not humbling ourselves. We're not coming trusting in God. We're not coming hoping in God. We're not coming with faith like, like a little child. See, contrite is feeling or expressing pain or sorrow. How many times do we come to God with our needs or we come to God with our pains or our sorrows? And, and I love this word here in the very end. These, O oh God, you will not despise. To despise is to look down on with contempt. Despise. To look down on contempt. But did you notice the word before? Not. Not. N-O-T. Big old not. N-O-T, God doesn't look down at us with contempt. We deserve it, but he doesn't do it. How many times do you go to a friend or a family member and you open up with honesty and then it's used against you? How many times and you, you, you walk away, man, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have spoken that. Oh, you know, I went to church. I thought I could get healed. I thought I could have some friends. And Man, those are the biggest gossipers they are. But to God, not. First Peter 2, 1 through 3. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes. See, newborn babes doesn't have this, do they? We, we, we learn this throughout life. We, we learn how to, to have a malice. We learn how to be deceitful. We learn you know, hypocrisy. We learn how to envy. Amen? This is what it's kind of saying. We learn how to evil speak. We learn how to ne be negative with our mouth. We learn that. I, I don't know of a child that says, oh, you know what? Uh, this is just negative. This is, you know, they, they learn that from mommy and daddy. They learn that from their school. They learn that from their environment. Uh, you know, because God gave them a I can attitude. We give them a I, I can't attitude, amen? See, if we're not careful. And see, God loves the attitude that I come to him, I can do all things through you, Father God. Not that I come to you and I can't do anything. Oh, you know what? God loves the fact that we come to him with a broken heart. Oh, a contrite spirit. That we come to him humbling you know what, Lord, I, I, I can't do anything on my own, but I know I can do all things with you. As long as I come in my name of my father, I can defeat my Goliath. He wants us to come as children to him, not with the immaturity, not with lack of wisdom, but with the honesty, the hope, and the trust that a child has, the dependency that the child has. Joshua depends on mommy and daddy. He, he, he can trust in us. He can have hope in us. He has faith in us. And now we take that, and as he's growing older, we take that and we transfer that over to Jesus, that it's all Jesus and not us. That way, when he's out and about on his own, you know, he doesn't have to worry about mommy or daddy. He just has to worry about Jesus. My hope's in Jesus. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Oh, you know what? That's, this is really why, why he's a leader. Man, when he gets his mind focused on something, he is a leader in everything. I mean, that's right. Because he knows it's not him. He knows it's Jesus because his hope and trust is in Jesus. But as he's growing, I see also the world coming in. Not into him, but the world's coming to him, knocking on the door. You can do all things because uh, he's been saying a couple of times, you know, I can't, no, 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 you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Your words are powerful. What if we start retraining ourselves that our words are powerful, that we can do all things, that whatever was meant for bad is God's going to turn for good because my hope is in him. My dependency, I'm depending on him. Uh, you know, what if we start turning that wisdom? In, oh, we start taking the world out and start adding the wisdom of God and start changing our vocabulary, our beliefs and what we trust in. And then we turn to God with all hope, with all faith, with all trust as a child. But I have the wisdom of God that I know God's word says says this, so it shall be done. If God's promised it, then it has to come to pass. All I have to do is stand and keep walking it out because all God's word will never fail. But I'm coming to him as a child in belief and faith. See, it says, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. See, when we come to God as a child and we depend on God, you're going to see how gracious he is. And then that's going to have a hunger for his word. That's going to have a hunger that, you know, I desire more of him almighty. That's right. See, whenever you get a taste of him, I don't know how you can walk away. I know how physically you can walk away. But spiritually, there's always will be attachment. There'll always be more. And that's what we have to groom and grow. And that's what we're talking about next week. 
is the spirit side of things, how we have to grow spiritually. Because if Holy Spirit comes within and grows us, oh, then we should have a reverence for God that has authority over our flesh. Matthew 18, two through four. This is all free. I'm about to get in the message, amen? We just, you know, this is all free. Matthew 18, verse two through four. It says, then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them and said, as surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as, a little child, as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Did you, did you, did you hear that? Let me read it again. Assuredly, these are red words here. Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as the little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. See, converted means to turn, to undergo a transformation or change of position or action. See, if I choose to be converted, and I change my ways, I change who I depend on, I, do, I choose not to depend on myself, I, I choose to realize that I need to humble myself, it's not all about me, although I, I need to pat myself on the back every once in a while, I need to take this hand, and I need to remove it, and, and you know, because it's not about me, it's about God Almighty, what I need to be doing is see how close I can get to God, so I can pat Jesus on the back, thank you for saving me, thank you for giving me life, thank you for everything that you've done, because it's nothing about me, See, I need to convert my mind and my thoughts over to, to relying on God Almighty. It's not my physical stature, amen? Take the biggest warrior there is, Goliath Almighty, and he fell by the name of our Father. Because David knew who to get the glory. He knew who to depend on. The word humble, to bring low. To humble someone conceived of as bringing the person low or down. And, and I love the word just before, humble, whoever. That means you and I take the first step. Whoever, that means we need to take the first step. God can humble us and there's no doubt about it. But there's just something about us getting before God and, and kneeling down and humbling ourselves before him. That he doesn't have to, I choose to. I choose to humble myself. You know what? I know I'm an adult, but I know there's nothing I can do without your blessings. I, I, I know that I'm an adult, but I, there's nothing I can do but with, but without your favor, without your anointing, without your presence. You know what? I, I thought I defeated the enemy, but it really wasn't me. You already had the, defeat, the enemy defeated before I ever showed up. They were already weak. They were already gone. Oh, you know, oh, you know, I, the, the mountains destroyed, the glass destroyed. Well, how can you say that, Pastor? Well, every time Satan shows up, knocking at your door, read the scripture. He's already been defeated. It's just an illusion. It's just something that he's trying to throw out some bait. But we as children, I can't depend on you. I can only serve one master. I, I, I depend on God Almighty. See, God loves when we come to him as a child. I love when Joshua, you know, whenever he comes and he, he just has arms lifted up, daddy, daddy, you know, it just, it's complete innocence. It's complete, just, you know, faith, trust, no worry, no doubting. How many times do we teach this to others? And this is how we get, how we receive, how we change our lives to depend on God is we have to start looking at our lives and we need to start understanding that, you know, I need to come to God as a child. That means, you know, I, I need to start depending on him. And how do I start depending on him is I start coming to him as a child. Lord, you know what? I, I, I'm trying to work this out, but I know I, I can't work this out without your blessings. I, I can't, I, you know, I don't want to make a way because I can't, my way is all messed up. It's crooked places. It's messed up. It's going to be destruction. It's going to be devastating. But your way is the way that I want to go. See, when Joshua comes, it's like, you know what? No, son, you're not going to do that. No, nope, that's not going to happen. Well, what do you mean, Daddy? What do you mean? That's, that's not going to happen in this house. This is the direction we're going. Yes, sir. How many times do we go to God? What do you mean, Lord? I'm going to do it anyway. I'll show you. We got to come to him like a child. How do we do this? There's four basics. And we know this. But as Christians, we lose this. One, Prayer. Prayer. We have to have a prayer life. Amen? 
We have to understand that, that, you know what, just as Ephesians 4 says, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ. Mark, I mean, Mark says in nine, and he sat down, called the 12 and said to them, if anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. How, how do you become a servant of all? And then he, he, Jesus even goes, whoever receives one of these, his, one of these children, children, little children in my name receives me and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. How, how do you get this revelation? It's through prayer almighty. We have to have prayer. Prayer is a relationship with our father. That's the first step of becoming a, a, a child to God. That, you know what, I, I come to you because I, I, need, I need to have a prayer. I, I need to have a relationship. I need to have a communication. You know, I, I don't need to just keep speaking. There's a time that I need to be silent and still and wait. Because I need to listen to my God. I need to understand what God's doing in my life. Jesus said several times, let the little children come to him. Don't rebuke them. Whoever, whoever puts a stumbling block in, in their life, in their way, oh, it's going to be worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Because God loves the child that comes. He loves the innocent because there's trust. Oh, you, you can't move that child. You can't touch their faith. You can't touch their hope. They have an imagination. They go to God with this imagination and, and they talk to God. I, I've, I've sat there and watched Joshua and he sits there and talks to God about the things that he, he's going to do in life and, and the different things and, and just playing and, and just playing and having a great time with the Lord. You know, playing his, his little, 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 his Nerf guns and, and things in, in the house. And then he's whispering and talking to the Lord and thank you, Jesus, for this. And thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you. Whereas on the way to school the other day and here he's, you know, hey, we always pray. You know, whoever takes him to school, we always pray. And he usually starts with prayer. And I love listening to his prayers. Hey, son, you want to go ahead and pray? Yeah, I'll go ahead and pray. Lord, I just want to thank you for our car. I want to thank you for our home. And Lord, I, I, I pray, Father, for those that don't have a car, that you'll give them a car. Those that don't have a home, well, you give them a home. I, I pray for a healing I, I, on those that need a healing. I, I thank you for our school. I, I thank you for our friends. I thank you for our family. I, I thank you for the toys that we have. I, I thank you that, that Daddy and I can go do this. I thank you that Mommy and I can do this. I mean, it's so innocent. It's so trustworthy. It's such faith. And when he asks, he believes it, and it shall be done. It, there's just something. There's not a doubt in his mind or his heart about God Almighty. There's just a faith that, that when he prays, it's not like the rabbis or the Sadducees, you know, the Sadducees or the Pharisees with these big long words. It's, you know what, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And Lord, I thank you for this. I thank you for that. 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 Okay, so we're almost at school right now. Did you want daddy to pray? I'm not done yet. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. I mean, it, but you know, there's an innocence and there's a trust because his faith is in God Almighty. What if we came to God with all this thanksgiving and praise instead of our needs. How about children? We come to God like children. I don't like the situation, but I know it's in your hands because nothing can happen without going through your hands. So since it has to go through your hands, I praise you. I worship you. But you don't know that unless you do the very first thing is prayer, a relationship with God. It says first Thess Thessalonians 5 17. We know this pray without ceasing. Matthew 6, it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Isn't it that, that word all, did you notice this word all? See, if I go into prayer and I have a relationship with God, I'm going to understand as long as I seek his kingdom and his righteousness, all things will be added to me. As long as I don't start seeking the world, as long as I don't start seeking my ways, as long as I don't start seeking pride. Oh, you know what? I am able to do this. I'm able to do that. You know, we have to get the eyes and the me's out of our vocabulary and realize it's Jehovah, it's El Shaddai, oh, it's Yahweh, it's Yeshua HaMashiach, it's, it's our Emmanuel, God with us. We have to realize that it's him. It's not about me. So how do you have dependency on God? First, you have to pray. It establishes a relationship. Prayer is communication. That means you talk and that means you shut up and listen. Take a stopwatch and measure the time that you talk in the measure of the time you listen. The time you listen should be greater than the time you talk. My son loves to talk. Now he's a talker. But when he asks a question, he loves to listen because he loves to learn because he wants to beat you. <laughs> You want know, to take daddy down and everything. It's all about beating daddy at everything. 
So he listens. Well, daddy, how do you do this? You show him, you show him, you show him. See, he's, he's listening. He's paying attention. And then when the next time happens, here, let me do that. I don't I know how to do this, daddy. He, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he does. You know why? Because he was paying attention. If we would take more time to pay attention to God, we would know how to walk like God. We would know how to believe like God. We'd have faith greater than we have now. We'd have hope greater than we do now. We would understand that we're not a mistake. We wouldn't have to go back to the mirror and look and say, Lord, why'd you make this? Lord, why am I like this? You go back to the mirror and say, man, I, I'm made perfect. God didn't make a mistake. God never makes a mistake. I'm not an accident. God doesn't make accidents. Everything has to go through his hands. I don't care if your family member told you an accident or if your friend said you was an accident. You're not an accident in God's eyes because God knows all things. But if I have this prayer life and I understand that, you know what? This wasn't an accident. This situation that I'm going through is not a mistake. God ordained it because it has to go through his hands. So if he ordained it, that means he, I, I can handle this. That means I can come out on the other side better. But until you have a life of prayer, your you know, lifestyle of prayer, you'll never experience that because you'll never hear from God that you are are good. You are great. You are my child. I call you a friend. I've given you wisdom. All you have to do is ask for more wisdom. I've given you the guidance and the direction. Oh, you want this? Not a problem. You do your part and I'm going to do my part. This is my promise. Oh, I'm not going to uh, fall short on my promise. And if we would have this lifestyle of prayer, we would realize that God is God above all and I can depend on him. Second thing we have to do, these are just basics. These are just basics is study. Study to show yourself approved. This is how we get dependency on God. 2 Timothy 2.15, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Matthew 11.28 says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You'll never know how to get rest from Jesus unless you study. We have to study his word. I don't, you know, you'll never know that he wants your burdens. You'll never know how great of a person you are. You'll never see that, you know, he never made a mistake. When you read this Bible, you understand that, that there was never a mistake within this Bible. Right. It doesn't contradict itself. God is not a liar either. You'll realize that. So when you experience a lie, you're, no, you're going to know exactly where it came from. Right. Satan himself. But we have to study. We have to study. We have to study. Did I say it enough? We have to study. When you go to work, you study, right? If there's something you need to learn, you study, right? Because you like that paycheck. But that paycheck comes by God Almighty. So why aren't we studying his word so we can be advanced? If I want the promotion, that means I need to get it in the word. If I need to know how to marry, I need to get in the word. If I need to know how to be a spouse, I need to get in the word. If I need to know how to be a child of God, I need to get in the word. If I need to know how to raise my son, I need to get in the word. If I need to know how to treat my mom and dad, I need to get in the word. If I need to know how to be an employee or employer, I need to get in the word. I need to get in the word. I need to study. It's not rocket science. But see, Satan wants to come and say, it's not that easy. It's not this. He wants to make it harder than really what it is. And it's not really that hard. Prayer is a communication. Because I started with prayer. Because without prayer, I, 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 I'm not going to have anything. Because as I study God's word, then I can come to him in prayer and say, Lord, I really don't understand this. Can you help me with this? And God will start revealing the truth of his word. He'll start manifesting that word within your life. If you just go to him in prayer, Lord, the scripture here, I don't really understand. That's what your pastor does. There's several things in this Bible. There's 70 different levels within each and every verse. Lord, I don't, you know what, Lord, I've been reading this verse for several years and I, I get this, I get that, but I just know there's something greater. Will you reveal it to me? And there it is. But I had to study. I had to read the word. Second Peter 3, 18 says, but grow in the grace of knowledge, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory forever. Amen. Both now and forever. Amen. So what, what does it say? Grow in the grace and knowledge. First Corinthians 14, 20 says, brethren, do not be children in understanding. Brethren, do not be children in understanding. Did you read that? Children, brother, brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice, be babes. That means your fights, fight like a baby, that you don't hurt anybody. 
You're not going to hurt them with your mouth. You're not going to hurt them physically. But in understanding, be mature. That means I need to come to God as a child, being humble, depending on him. But I, I, I need to be mature in my understanding because there's no excuse to ever come to God or walk out something with immaturity because I'm in the midst of prayer and I'm studying his word. So I have all the wisdom there is. So I can come to God knowing that I can come to his throne room boldly. Oh, and I'm going to, oh, the grace and the mercy that he's going to have upon me. I can come asking for wisdom and he's going to give it. This is what the word of God says. You know that you can ask for wisdom and you, you shall receive it. Yes. As long as you don't doubt, as long as I come to him as a child that, you know what? I, I, I have to come into prayer. I have to get everything out. I, I need to remove the doubt. I need to remove the worry and help me, Lord, with my doubt. Help me with my worry. Help me with all these addictions. Help me with everything. And I come to you, Father God, and I'm asking you to help me with wisdom. Help me with your knowledge. Help me with the understanding. Enlighten the eyes of my understanding, Father God. I need to come as a child that I'm not going to doubt. Whatever you say, I, I, you know, it's going to be tough to walk it out. But but you know that it's kind of like the gentleman that needed the healing for his child. He came to Jesus and Jesus says, well, can you believe? He goes, yes, I believe, but help my unbelief. Your child is healed. God knows, but coming to him and being honest, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me with my belief? But it comes by studying the word of God, knowing that his promises stand forever. The third thing, you have to be a doer. Don't expect anything if you can't be a doer, Right? Don't expect the paycheck if you're not a doer at work. Amen. We all want the blessing, but we don't want to be a doer. Amen. Back the tractor up. How many times there's a tractor trailer of blessings sitting at your house, but you won't go unload them. James 1.22 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. That means I'm going to walk out in joy. I know an individual that's going through leukemia right now through cancers, CAT scans, and everything else, I've been able to spend some time with this individual. And, and I, I love this man. I, I love him. I love the fact that you're around him and what he's going through, the treatments, the IVs, blood transfusions every two weeks. Just last week, he went through three blood transfusions. Uh, you know, just one thing after another thing, after another thing, after another thing, and you talk to him, God has the healing. There's just a fight in heaven right now until the healing comes down. Oh, my trust is in Jesus Christ. I'm gonna walk it out and believing that Jesus, I might be at the doctor's office. I might be, at, uh, you know, getting treatment. I might be in chemo. I might be in this, but my, I'm depending on my God, my Jehovah Rapha. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. Oh, th this is doing the word that I'm going to speak it. I'm going to live it. I I'm going to be what God's called me to be. You know, I might be walking through the, oh, the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm not going to fear because God Almighty's with me. That's a doer. I'll do what the physicians say, but I'm not depending on you. I'm depending on my God. I have another lady in another state that's going through chemo treatments, getting tweets, and I talk to her on the phone, pray with her on the phone out of state and she's, you know what, I'm standing on God's word. I'm standing on God's word. Hey, pastor, I feel down. I just feel like, you know, I just, I don't know. Well, you know what, let's get on the phone. Let's, you know, you know pray because you know what, uh, on God's word, you know, we're a doer. So we're going to believe, we're going to stand. You know what, I, I'm not, this is not going to conquer you because God is the conquer. Amen. We come in the name of the Lord. We're going to, oh, this is going to be a testimony that's going to glorify our Jehovah Jireh. But we have to be a doer, just not a hearer of the word. I can hear it, but I have to do it. And a lot of times, we're not doers with our mouth. You know, everything else, we come in church, but in the inside, we're doubting, we're worrying. And outside the, the church, we're speaking negative. God can't do this. I don't know why he is. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to be this. I'll be in the grave before you know it. Luke 11, 28 says, but he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. Keep it. Let me just put it, do it. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. You gotta be a doer. 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Hallelujah. I put away the childish things, but I come to God with all dependency as a child. I come to him with my hands. Lord, Father, God, I need you. I cry out to him. My hope is in you. All my trust is in you. My faith is in you. Hebrews 6. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and 
of faith toward God. Amen? If I'm going to be a doer, that means I'm walking towards him, not away from him. That means I choose to do the word. I'm going to be more like him. I'm going to reflect his light. Amen? We know the, the parable of the, the, the rich man that came to Jesus. You know, hey, how can you be saved? How can you do this? You know, and, and what, what did Jesus say? You know, you just do this, 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 this. Well, I do all that. Well, then I'll tell you what, go and sell everything and then follow me. He was able to hear it, but he wasn't able to do it. And we know what Jesus said. It's going to be hard for a rich man in heaven, but only by me, by my grace. And those riches just isn't money. It's whatever you're serving. It's whatever is an idol. It's whatever you're putting your dependency on. First one was prayer. Second one. Third one. Be a doer. Fourth one. Jesus wants you to love life. Jesus came knew what his purpose was, but he loved life. Don't tell me he didn't sit around the campfire and laugh with his disciples. Don't tell me that they didn't have holy jokes. Amen. Don't tell me that they didn't, didn't get around and dance or, or whatever. Don't tell me that he didn't have a party, a Holy Ghost party. Amen. He didn't walk around with a frown. Oh, I'm going to the cross. I'm, oh, hallelujah. I'm going somewhere where, you, oh, I just wish I could tell you. I wish you could understand it. Jesus had an excitement about life. See, he wants you to live life. The reason why is because Jesus died that you would have life. So he wants you to have life. He doesn't want you to worry about tomorrow. He wants you to take no thought. He wants you to enjoy what you have today. Because if I enjoy what I have today, that means I'm putting full dependency on God has tomorrow. I don't have to worry about the electric bill. I don't have to worry about this circumstance. I don't have to, anything I don't know I'm going to enjoy today. How many times have you spent weeks worrying about something that never manifested? You sat there doubting. You sat there worrying. You had this all planned out. Well, if they say this, then I'm going to do this. If this happens, then that's, you know, I mean, all hours and hours turns into weeks and months. And then it turns into a volcano where now you have a, a, you know, there's disputes within your house. There's frustration. You're walking around with all this. And all you have to do is say, you know what? I take no thought for tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy life. And I'm not going to worry about something that might not ever happen. I've done it too many times. I've wasted too many hours of sitting around worrying about this, doubting this, whatever the situation was. And then all, you know, to go through all these hours, all these weeks, and it never came to pass. We don't have to worry. Love life. Love and enjoy what you're doing now. Come to God as a child, but with wisdom. Wisdom is, Lord, I know your word. You said it. You're going to do it. You promised it. <laughs> if you promised it, that means I'm going to walk it out. That means I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to walk it out. And I'm going to love life. And I'm going to enjoy this day. Because this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I'll give him praise. Satan's not going to rob this day. It doesn't matter what I'm walking through. Doesn't mean, doesn't matter how bad you might think it is. It's not bad to me because my God is still God. He is still Lord and Savior. Matthew 6, 34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day it is its own trouble. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart does good like medicine. Oh, how about that? So laughter is great. Amen. So take the day and enjoy laughing. Take the day and laugh at someone else. Amen. <laughs> It's okay. God didn't say if you laughed at someone else, it's not medicine. He just said, laughter is a medicine. Amen? Amen? Have you ever had a good laugh, or just a gut-riching laugh, where you, you, and then you just got up completely different? It's like the world was off of you. The stress was off of you. Joshua, you know, the other day, you know, he's sitting there doing these high kicks. You know, I, I, I love it. Don't tell him this. But he, he can kick really high, and he'll go up, and he'll kick his hand. But then as he gets tired, th this is what happened. His hand comes down. <laughs> But I love it. You know, oh, that's good. That's really high. I, I, I love it. And, and we laugh about it. And he kicked one day and whoop, he fell on his butt because he kicked too hard. And his, but I mean, we, we laughed and, and, you know, he laughed. And it was like the whole, it set the whole environment and the atmosphere in that room completely different. Because when you're laughing, you're not worrying. When you're laughing, you're not doubting. When you're laughing, you're not thinking about your situation. That's right. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy. Have fun. And how you do this, you've heard how you eat an elephant, is one bite at a time. It's one step at a time. 
That's all you have to do. Just love life. Live it to its fullness. Just take one step. You know what, Lord, I have a toenail that, that I need healed. Okay. You think something's too small for God? Lord, there's a pimple that showed up here. and yeah, I don't, Go to God. Because you can't trust him with the big things if you don't trust him with the small things. But if you know he healed the pimple, then he's going to heal the next one that's a little bit bigger. And you grow your faith. You walk it out. To when your Goliath shows up, he's just a pimple. That's all he is, right? Right? Goliath's just a pimple. That's all it is. Let me just share. Jesus gave us two examples when he came on earth. This side, deity. God Almighty, the manifestation of God. I'm going to close with this. This side, man. I want you to get this. I want you to understand this. This is important. Jesus was the Word wrapped in flesh. He demonstrated on this side God Almighty, deity. He came on earth, perfect example of the triune or trinity. Whichever one you want to believe, I'm not going to get in theology. One believes one, one believes three manifestations, but let me just tell you, our God is God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Deity, he came down. God Almighty. When you look at me and you see me, you see my Father in heaven. He was grace and truth. He was a perfect example that you come to God, you study God's word, you do this in spirit and truth. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowered him. The word, he was the word wrapped in flesh, the word of God. Spirit, Holy Spirit, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. He wasn't baptized in the name of the Son because he was the Son. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So now you have spirit and truth right here on this side. I can curse the fig tree and it shall dry up. I am going to destroy all sin. I will give up my life. I will lay my life down that you may have life. Because see, the man side, and then one step further, our man side is nothing but sin. And see, we're saved by grace because there's nothing that we can do. But we're saved by the works of Jesus. Deity without sin. Authority over all things. Authority over death. Remember, you, you look at me, you, you see the Father. Holy Spirit. There's two ingredients for the manifestation of God. The Word of God and Holy Spirit. The Word plus Holy Spirit equals God's manifestation. So we see Him as God. We see Him as God. Almighty, able to do all things, conqueror of all things. We see him. But you know what else we see him as? We see him as a perfect example of man, of what we can become. He was man too. He bled. He had struggles. He had limitations because he couldn't be everywhere anywhere because he was wrapped in flesh. But he was still God. And then he called this gentleman, Peter. Peter! Hey, will you follow me? Follow me. Follow me. Come on. I'm a fisherman. I don't care who you are because I can transform you. I I'm calling you. So Peter, a man. Jesus gave us the perfect example. What did Jesus say? That I have to go with the Father, but I send the Comforter. 
I, I left my word for you to study. I'm sending Holy Spirit. So Peter, you, you have the word of God. Plus now you have the spirit. So if you have those two, that should equal a manifestation of my glory. And it was a perfect example that Jesus was God Almighty, but he was giving us the example as men of God and women of God, how we should live our life. Because you know what? You have the word so you can study. Oh, you know what? You have Holy Spirit because I sent Holy Spirit. I baptize you in, in the spirit. So now you have the manifestation. And if we would look at Peter, that he was just a fisherman. He was just a sinner saved by grace because it was the works of Jesus that saved him, not our works. Oh, thank you, Lord, because I would be on my way to hell but he was saved Peter was saved by grace and now that you have the word the word now that you were baptized in the in, in the Holy Spirit you have the evidence of Holy Spirit you live you have a relationship with Holy Spirit he's your comforter he's your counselor he empowers you now go out and you're gonna preach the gospel I give you authority over the demons I give you authority over all in fact what you're gonna do is you're gonna do greater than I you're gonna do greater than I and then Jesus ran from him. I mean, uh, Peter ran from Jesus in the midst of the garden. Denied him three times. And Jesus shows up. Do you love me? You know I do. Do you love me? I, you know I do. Do you love me? Did Jesus say at that time, you're no good? You're not my disciple? Peter, I mean, I'm depending on you. You're my hands and feet. You have the word. You have Holy Spirit. Will you manifest it for my Father's glory? <coughs> Will you manifest it for my, my Father's glory? So you know what Jesus taught us? Pray. Study. Right? Be a doer. And love life. Because you're going to be persecuted. They're going to down you. The world is. But if I look and I put myself in Peter's spot, I've denied God, I've done God wrong, but he's always forgiven me. And if I look at him and he says, you know what, Daniel, you can do greater. Well, how can I do greater? Study the word. Let Holy Spirit guide you and direct you. And it'll be a manifestation for my Father's glory. Because he was truth. was spirit holy spirit was within him and when i look at him he was the father the manifestation of our father that said i can do greater you know what he said he said that you can do greater there's no reason that we as christians are living a defeated life there's no reason we have the power to change it and it's the word of god and it's my precious holy spirit and I'm challenging you this week, if you would just get in your prayer closet, you would open up your word and study, and you would start whatever you read, whatever you understand, you just start doing that. And then you start living a life that, oh, I'm just gonna love life. I'm just gonna, that, that I'm just gonna, today is gonna be the life. I'm telling you, you're gonna see God's manifestation. You're gonna see a change in your life, and it's gonna put you on fire for God. It's gonna, it's gonna revive that, that salvation that's all drowned up, you know, because it's going to realize that, you know what? It's not by my works. It's by God Almighty. I'm covered by the blood. I'm a new creation. He took the heart of stone and he gave me a heart of flesh. And he's poured in Holy Spirit to activate the word. Because see, God said in, in his word that he has written his word upon our hearts. So Holy Spirit comes in and activates that word and gives us the manifestation of God that I can start speaking life into every situation. I don't have to die because God's already defeated death. You know what? I don't have to deal with this, Satan, because you're not welcome in my home because I have authority that was given to me by my almighty Father in heaven. And you know what? He said that I can do greater. So that means, you know what? I, you're going to get the boot. And some of you need to start booting some things out of your life. And the only way you can do that is through prayer and study and be a, a doer instead of just to hear and then to walk out a life that that represents God that you know what I choose not to doubt because I'm a doer of the word I choose not to worry I choose not to, to walk around in, in defeat I'm gonna walk around in victory because it's victory that I'm walking out hallelujah because I oh I, I see the manifestation and I I have the Word of God I have Holy Spirit which equals the manifestation of God in the manifestation of God 
is what glorifies every one of his names. Amen? I want you to understand this. It's very basic. But you know what we have to do? We have to set some God time in our calendar. Hey, everyone. Hey, Pastor Daniel. I hope that you enjoyed the message today. Powerful word, powerful word from God. And we want you to get connected with us. We want to hear from you. If you gave your heart to the Lord today from the message, we want to hear from you. Email us at admin at peakworship.com and give us the good news so we could celebrate with you. And we want you to check out the website, peakworship.com. And we want you to like us on Facebook and Instagram. You can like me on um, Facebook and Instagram personally. We want to get connected with you. We want to share our hearts with you. And we want to hear more about what's going on in your life. So make sure that you get plugged in and get connected.